Welcome to the Profitable Practitioner Podcast. This is a podcast for unlicensed practitioners and coaches as they navigate their way through the journey of entrepreneurship. Here, we will be having conversations with practitioners about their businesses, gathering marketing and business tips from other online experts, and ultimately creating a community for support and growth. My goal is to give you the knowledge, tools, and support you need to build, scale, and sell your services so you can truly create the business of your dreams. Hey guys, I'm so excited for this first episode of the new format of really just having conversations with practitioners. Um, Today, I am sharing with you this conversation that I had with Jennifer Nelson Hawks. So Jen is a board certified doctor of naturopathy, a bioresonance practitioner, an an iridologist, and an IASIS practitioner. So in 2013, she founded a full functional holistic wellness center, um, which is actually how I got to know Jen because I actually worked for Jen at uh, Simply Health Collective, which is the wellness center. I was the main nutritionist on board and I really, it was such such a pleasure just getting to work under Jen and learn from her. Um, Now Jen, Jen recently sold that brick and mortar and she now solely focuses her attention on Jennifer Hawk's health. Um, She is creating an online course right now for women to conquer digestive health and I am actually helping her to create that course. She is one of my clients currently. So it's always fun to see how the world kind of goes around. You know, we worked with each other in one circumstances, one circumstance, both as practitioners and now have moved forward to this place where I am helping her with the marketing side of her business to really bring that vision to life. So I really hope you guys enjoy this conversation that I had with Jen and yeah, enjoy. Okay, so today I am here with Jennifer Nelson Hawks. Um, Jen is not only one of my close friends, but she also used to be my boss. So she kind of helped me get into the world of holistic health and back when I practiced as a nutritionist. So I owe Jen a lot and I really love her. Um, But Jen, thank you for coming and talking with me today. Oh, of course. I'm super excited to be here with you and talk about all the fun things. And honestly, just like, see like how you've progressed and you're right. We met such a long time ago and I saw something in you that was like me when I was your age. And, um, it's been so fun to watch, uh, you blossom. So I'm excited to be here with you. That's so sweet. Yeah. I remember, um, like, I guess I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but back when I worked for you and I remember putting in my notice for my two weeks and I felt so bad and like so sad. And I remember you just said to me, like, I knew this was only like a stopping point for you. There was always so much more that lied ahead. So that always meant a lot to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So let's just chat about like your background in holistic health and how you kind of got into this area. Well, that's a very loaded question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I will make it short, but essentially, um, I was kind of introduced to holistic medicine or well, really, um, holistic medicine when my little sister was five years old. Um, I was at the time 15 and, uh, my sister's, um, entrance into this world was pretty scary. She was born three and a half months early. She weighed a pound, 12 ounces, and it was really quite incredible to watch the medical world, um, keep her alive. Like it was super surreal, but when she was five, she started having seizures and that's when, um, Western medicine just didn't have the tools to give my sister what she needed. And so my parents turned to holistic medicine, which is when I got my first glimpse to, um, look into what changing lifestyle and diet and different modifications of, what we do in our day-to-day um, space does for the human body because my sister never had another seizure. So that's really like, that was when the the seed was planted for holistic medicine for me. And then um, it took a while to get into the space that I am now, but um, it just, it wasn't exactly the the most smooth, easiest road, but I am here now and I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about that road. Um, so about what age did you decide 
that you wanted to kind of make this a career path? Well, I wanted to make this a career path, honestly, when I was 15 years old. I knew it's something that I wanted to do. I knew it was deep within my my soul. But um, truth be told, life got a hold of me and I graduated high school. I went to college and I got married right away. And um, back, uh, back then, it wasn't being in holistic medicine wasn't really sought out. It wasn't sought out. Um, going through Western medicine, um, it was the easiest route. So that's what I did. Um, I went and I, um, I essentially just became a certified medical assistant at the time. And I worked with functional medicine. I worked with oncology. I worked in, um, rheumatology and I worked in blood banks. I did all, I did all the, the, uh, the office type of stuff, um, for doctors for many years. And it wasn't until, um, I got divorced and I moved to a different state. I moved to Wyoming and I eventually met my husband. And when I was 30 years old, I decided it was time that I could financially, I could mentally, I could emotionally make that pivot. And that's when I, that's when I made that pivot. Oh, I love that. <laughs> And that's one thing that I always admired about you too, is that, you know, you're always kind of willing to make pivots and, but most importantly, when you like become dedicated to something, you really put your all into it and you make it happen. And um, yeah, I've always looked up to you for that. Cause sometimes I think coming into the world of holistic health, like you were saying at your time, it just wasn't something people really did. And now it's like it's a lot what a lot of people are doing so it's almost like the opposite where there's like so much competition um that it can be kind of hard to make your way as well but like really when you just like put your head down and like make it happen that you can do it you know absolutely and I think that that is one of the things is um I did just that um you know I knew what I wanted to do I knew it wasn't going to be an easy road and I did what I had to do and the stepping stones that I had to take to get there and so you know I did go back to school um I shortly shortly after that I because of that change you know no change comes easy so having yeah. worked in functional medicine um with providers that truly taught me so much and when I had to step away from from that field and really those, those individuals, um, it was scary because I was then standing there by myself with a modality with modalities that people weren't truly on board with yet, but I knew firsthand the power of them because I saw it in, in my own sister. And so I just knew that it, it was not, it was, it was something that I, that I would continue to work towards. And I just kept going and going. And, you know, what happened is one thing I'm going to say is I'm a, I'm a darn good manifester because if you <laughs> manifest your way into things, like if you just keep putting positive energy out and you keep, you, you let the universe know what you want and you, you really let yourself know what you want and you don't self doubt, not that self doubt doesn't come in, but when you continue to progress forward, um, you start to watch magical things unfold. And so that's, you know, that's when I opened the, my full functional wellness center and started to see clients one-on-one -on -one. and, um, yeah. And now I actually just, I just watched a video just today, interestingly enough, that this woman was just talking about how we all get in our way, but really, if you take a, a step back and look at where you were five or 10 years ago and look at where you are today, like I'm sitting in the seat that I wanted to sit in. Right. Yeah. And today I'm looking ahead of like, what's my next step? So it, it was a great reminder when I watched that of, you know, we are all where we all where we are, where we need to be at the time we are. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's okay if you're not quite where you need to be. And it's okay if you're a little bit further advanced than where you thought you were going to be, because right here, take in what you, where you are taking what you're doing and, you know, be joyous about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that so much. I've, I've been talking to my husband about that. Like when you're kind of in the moment of things, and I think as life progresses, you begin to learn all these lessons and see them repeat themselves. So it becomes a little bit easier, but it can still be hard in the moment when things aren't looking exactly the way that you were picturing them. Um, I know I kind of had that with nutrition, like 
it took me forever to like kind of get to a place where I had established my practice. And then even I got to a point where I was like, well, now this isn't what I want to do. And I'm like, crap, like I put all of this time and energy into learning about nutrition and like developing this business. And now am I just like throwing it all away? But actually, when you look back on it, like that's what got me to where I am now. And even I can like look back on like college and like, you know, just like every little choice that I've made, and I'm sure that you've made that leads you exactly where you are. And in the moment, it feels really frustrating. And like, it's not working out the way that you want it to. But in the big picture, it's always what's supposed to happen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I love it. And it's, um, and it's so fun to watch, you know, when you're, when it's you, when you're in that space, it's harder to see because Mm -hmm. we have such self-judgment and self, you know, um, we have, we have lots of demands on ourselves, but when you watch other people, you can see them blossom. You can see them unfold into the things that they truly love to do. And there's nothing more satisfying and nothing I mean, just, there's nothing more gratifying than doing the things that you love to do, to wake up every morning and be like, I really love doing what I do. And I'm really excited about it. Sometimes it gets a little overwhelming because you got, you've got multiple balls in the air, but ultimately like that is, that's the whole point of life, right? We're supposed to be happy and enjoying things and, and creating this, this passion that we, that we love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. No, I think as humans, inherently, we're just meant to create things and that'll look different for everyone, but that's truly what makes us happy, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So talk to me a little bit about when you start, when you got into functional medicine and you started your business, is that when you kind of got into bioresonance scanning? Is that how you started your business? Yeah, so I actually, um, I started out with iridology because- Going back to my little sister, my mom and dad took my sister to an iridologist. And so I, that is, that was my first exposure to it. So that's kind of what I knew at the time. So when I decided to go back to school um, and get a certification starting in this, this path, um, I went, I went into iridology, but what I, what I quickly found was for me and as people were transitioning over to the holistic world um, a functional medicine, they wanted real time. They they've been used to, you know, they've been used to quantifiable numbers, right? Their blood tests, their, you know, things that they were doing at the hospital, all, all the things that you do in, in Western medicine and iridology doesn't give you that right. Iridology Mm -hmm. is about the predisposition. It's, it's what, what is the makeup of your body? What's the blueprint? What are you going to be? What are, what are, what are the potentials that you're up against? And, but that wasn't real time for people because when you say, okay, I see you've got a lot of inflammation. Well, I don't feel inflamed. Okay. Well, if you don't change your diet and your lifestyle and you could do these things to help prevent that, but when you're not in that space, that's not where you want to put your energy. Mm -hmm. So how I, I started doing some research to find out um, basically how can the body tell us what we need to know, what signs, what, what can we look at? And yes, iridology is part of that and looking at the tongue and looking at the fingernails and skin and body and all the things, but the vibration patterns of the body are so powerful. And if you look at, if you look at traditional medicine, conventional medicine, you're going to have an EKG, EEG, MRI, or ultrasound. So that kind of matches um, the same type, not the same, the same type of technology, the bioresonance is. And so um, bioresonance was developed out of Germany. Um, uh, I mean, there were tons of Russian scientists involved with it, but essentially it is an algorithm of thousands of different um, frequencies that uh, that mimic what a healthy frequency in the body would look like. So when you subject a a body to those frequencies, the body will say, Hey, I know that one, but I don't know that one. And so what was, what was, what was starting to happen is the, those correlations were showing up saying, Hey, you need to start looking at this stuff right now, because this is what's going on. Or this, these are the patterns that are starting to happen. But people were like, Oh yeah, I have had some of those symptoms. And so that's really where bioresonance came in. And it was more for that. Okay. If we can look at iridology and we can look at real time bioenergy or frequency medicine going on, 
that was that was the key awesome yeah I love the bioresonance I feel like it gives such insight and it's so true like in today's age with clients I feel like it's absolutely essential to have some form of data behind it to you know I mean they're so used to that from western medicine and then also it helps give like more motivation because then when you can come back in and retest and see what's going on you really are able to give them a better pathway of like okay look you've came this far now let's keep going kind of thing yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, the beautiful thing about bioresonance, it's not just about supplements. It's not just mm-hmm. about diet. It's not just about sleep. Like it really looks at the body as a whole, right? And that's that's truly what functional holistic medicine is all about. It's looking yeah. at us as a as a whole instead of, you know, symptoms or bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. So um, where did Simply Health come into play? So uh, for anyone listening, Jen started her own brick and mortar wellness business, and that is called Simply Health, and it's in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah, so Simply Health um, now changed to Simply Health Collective, but Simply Health was born in 2013, and it was after I um, left um, working with medical doctors, and what had happened was I really started to collaborate with a, um, compounding pharmacist and she had her supplements. I had my supplements and then she was doing her consultations. I was doing my consultations, but we were so close. We were like, we, we just aligned so well together that we decided to create simply health collective or simply health at the time. And, um, that was basically our supplement store. And so Simply Health was um, where you could get all the high grade um, practitioner supported supplements. And then um, I, we started to you know, actually what happened was, and then she retired in 2016 and I um, brought on another business partner. And that's when we turned the supplement store into a, a functional wellness center. So we started to bring in different therapies and modalities that were, was beyond just supplementation. Okay. So do you feel like having that partner when you began that kind of, did it make it easier, more complicated, maybe both? How did you feel about that? That's a really great question. Um, (laughs) I pause. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think a business partner is challenging. It's really challenging because you have two, you know, you have two, you have, you have very different outlooks there's oftentimes um, d- different ways that you see things, you want to do things. Um, and ultimately what it came down to is uh, the path of Simply Health. Where did we where did we want Simply Health to go? And what was the quickest route to get there? And um, the business partners that I had were phenomenal. The, they're mm-hmm. phenomenal. I couldn't have done it without them could not have done it without them. Um, but it didn't necessarily make make it any easier. And, um, so I recently in September of 2022, um, I bought out, well, actually that's not true. Um, in September of 2022, I sold simply health. So simply health is, and now I just rent space from simply health, which I love because it's still my baby. Um, but I don't, I don't own it anymore. Okay. Yeah. Well, talk to me a little bit about that. What was that feeling like of selling? I mean, I'm sure it was like so bittersweet, right? Oh, it was so bittersweet. It was honestly like losing a child, but how I got myself through it, honestly, is I kept telling my husband, I feel like my child is going off to college. So (laughs) I just need someone else to take care of it. Right. So when, when your child goes off to college, it's so bittersweet, you know, they're growing up and you've done everything you can do, but now it's time for them to experience something different. And that is exactly what I needed to have happen. And mainly for me, because I was ready again to pivot into something else. And so, um, I just, I couldn't, my band, my bandwidth had come to an end. I couldn't be fully present for the wellness center and be fully present for my one-on-one consultation business, as well as, um, venture out into the virtual world, which is now where I'm going with with yeah. my career. Yeah. Which is what I'm helping you with a little bit. And it's that is so right. Exciting. Exactly. Yeah. I know. And having, you know, having, I always said, I always said, when you left, remember, I said, you are not, we're going to come back 
full circle, some way, somehow you and I are going to work together again. And did I think it was going to be on this capacity where I'm like, Maddie, I need your help. <laughs> um, no, not necessarily, but I am so grateful for it. Yeah. It's kind of crazy because, um, and it's like not that long of a time span since like when I worked for you at Simply Health, but yet here we are, you know, we've regained forces and in a completely different way for both of us, which is really fun and exciting to see. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you are incredible. You're incredible in so many aspects. Like you have the background of health and wellness. You have the background of technology. You have the background of marketing. I'm just like, Maddie, what is that? What can you not do? (laughs) That's what I would really like to know. Uh, You you put me to it and I'll probably figure out a way. (laughs) Unfortunately, (laughs) I'm like overdrive constantly. Um, but uh, let's chat a little bit about you moving more onto the online space. Cause I think this is so fun to see this pivot. Yeah. Um, so, so what kind of made you decide that you wanted to go more online and do more of a course for- format? You know, the really, the reality of that is, um, I wanted, I, I needed something different and I, there's only so many hours in the day. That's really mm-hmm. what it boils down to. There's only so many hours in the day. I can only see so many clients in a day without just feeling drained to myself. And I Mm -hmm. had to really come to that reality of how do I keep supporting women and men, but the online space will be more for women. How do I keep supporting these people that deserve to feel their best in a way that I am not, I'm not taking a backseat to my own health. Mm-hmm. And I'm living what I'm living and, and, and I, I'm living and supporting what I'm trying to teach. And so, hang on, I'm going to pause right there. Well, can you pause this afterwards? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Because I got to figure out how to turn. I'm on my computer. Do you know, do you know how to turn off the dingers? I think oh. I know. It's just my like text notifications. Thing. Yeah. It's my text messages. Can I just go in and say like, um, do you, are you on an apple? Yeah. Oh, I don't have an apple. Um, Hang on, I can do this. I think I just have to go into, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Is that okay? Wait, um, search, um, messages. Yeah, that used to happen to me on my Apple all the time too. And I I turned it off, but I can't remember how I did. I don't know, but I have to turn it off because it's 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 literally going to drive me insane. <laughs> you can you hear it on your side? No, I haven't I oh, haven't heard it. If you can't hear it, if you can't hear, I'm not gonna worry about it then. Let's just keep going because Okay, yeah, that's funny. I that's interesting how I don't hear it on my side, but I haven't heard it. Okay, now I gotta go back into you asked me a question and it was Oh, um, you on, on my about, I'm just going to start over talking about like being able to, yeah, just start over if you want. Um, so the, one of the reasons why I'm pivoting into the online space is because honestly, there's not enough hours in the day being a mm-hmm. one-on-one, um, practitioner. I just, I can see about four to five clients a day, but then I'm zapped. I don't, I don't have anything more to give. And, um, I want, I want to be able to provide for people all over the world and I want, I want women, specifically women, and not that that disrupts any, you know, male figure. I see men one-on-one, but the female space, I'm definitely um, more geared towards women and helping create a space in their health and wellness that can be optimally driven because our modern world, we are fast paced and we're stressed and I, I, I live it as well. And so I want to be able to provide them the information that I have, but in group settings, because I also think a group setting has the ability to have so much power to it because you have girlfriends that are empathetic. They, they understand what you're going through. They, they're willing to listen. They want, you know, they want to have a diversity of friends. And sometimes let's be honest, when we're trying to talk to our husband or we don't, or our friends, they're like, okay, I've heard this a million times. I don't want to hear it anymore. So having a space, an online space for 
for people to come and be able to collaborate with one another, to feel like they're safe. I've always been a big proponent of having a, a safe place, a safe place for anybody to be able to open up about what's going on in their health and learn how to um how to learn how to how to use tools and resources to get back to health and wellness. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. That's a beautiful thing about a course, obviously, is just you can make so much more impact without all of the time and energy that goes into it. But also the I I love that about creating the group with the women because you know, this is something I've been thinking a lot about lately. And I've actually been prioritizing like I I can tend to be the kind of person who just gets caught up in being a homebody and just being with my husband, but really prioritizing those women relationships because I feel like as women, we just have this nurturing quality that men can't quite embody. And we just can really give each other that love and, and nurturing that we really need on a soul level. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I've realized also, you know, there's, there are, there are those girlfriends, um, in our space, in our personal spaces that they are phenomenal friends, but when it comes down to truly aligning and being, you know, in that same, same space as you are all the time, that doesn't necessarily happen. So having a community of, of, of women, that are dealing with the same type of symptoms that are dealing with the same type of fears that are dealing with the same type of, um, you know, situations, fears, gains, all the things, but Mm -hmm. without expectation or without, you know, without feeling like they're alone. And sometimes I feel like girlfriends, as much as I love girlfriends, sometimes girlfriends can be hard. You know, they, they would be our, they're our friends for so long. And sometimes our, our thoughts and our, our, where we are in life and all the things just don't align like they used to. And it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that they can't be our friend, but it's really hard to create um, a safe space to be able to open up when you fear some judgment from, from some of those. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's really good to have that group of women that are in the same space as you. That's definitely. Mm-hmm. So I love that you're creating, creating that we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> um. So kind of what, what are some big lessons you'd say that you're learning right now from creating an online course? Oh my gosh. (laughs) I have a lot of lessons. One is boundaries within yourself, right? I mean, I had no idea. I thought here's, here's where my perfection paralysis kicks in because I want this to be perfect. Like I have years of knowledge. I have years of information. I have protocols. I have so many protocols, but I want to be, I want to make sure that every single individual that comes into my space gets the same treatment, you know, and same support and same guidance that the person next to them gets. Right. Which is phenomenal. I mean, that, that's just my passion. That's who I am. So when I see women or people, people putting up online courses, just on a whim for this and this, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I, I've, I've, I've purchased some of these courses Mm -hmm. to see what they're providing. And I am like, what in the world is happening out there? I feel like, I feel like honestly, some of these courses, I'm like, they put this together overnight and like, I just don't understand what's happening. It's so horrible. I'm on the same page as you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just learning that. Oh my gosh. Like, okay. Not every program is going to be created equal. And I get that, but it's also important for people on the outside looking in, right? Because they don't necessarily know who I am. They don't have that Mm -hmm. no like, and trust factor and where they, you know, so they're just like, they, they see me, they say, okay, she's a doctor of naturopathy. She's been an iridologist. She does bioresonance work. You know, I've got all the credentials behind my name, but what does that really mean? Right. They don't know Mm -hmm. who they don't know me. So when they look at my course and they see how comprehensive that it might be and how I'm like, okay, if you're not willing to be committed and you're not willing to give the time, like this might not be for you and that's okay. But Mm -hmm. it's also like, I promise every single person, like I say, I'll say it over and over again. You show up, you do the work. I promise you, you will get the results you want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so good to see because 
like you were saying right now, there's so many courses out there that's just pure marketing and marketing is amazing. You need marketing, to sell your course, but you need to have like balance as well where, okay, you sold this person on your course. Now you need to deliver what you promised, you yeah. know, that's and it's not a, it's not a small undertaking. You can ask my husband since January, I've been, I've been burning the candle at both ends. I launched next month in September and, um, it has been, it has been a, it's been a crazy journey. It's been a really crazy journey. And I have put every ounce of my spare time. I have cried in the shower. I oh. have quit on myself multiple times where I didn't really quit, but I really wanted to. I yeah. I mean, there's so many things, but um, because you know me and because I know me, <laughs> that's never going <laughs> to happen, right? I will keep, I will keep moving along and I'm always, I'm already like, okay, I'm going to launch this and then I'm going to sit in it for a minute and be super happy with it. But I know there's, there's something else around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good that you like see the big picture. And I think you're doing such an incredible job. I mean, I really see you putting the effort in and I think all the people who come through your course are going to be really appreciative for all your hard work. Thank you. Thanks to you for helping me set up the back end. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and all the, all the fun stuff in this in, in in between. But it's been um it's been very eye-opening. And it's also helped me really actually dive into specific areas of um of gut health. So yeah. I actually I actually went in kicking and screaming about what my niche was gonna be. I didn't want it to be gut health because everybody does gut health. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt like everybody did gut health. So, you know, I had picked little things here and there. And when I, I have amazing coaches that I have worked with through this process that are like, no, you got to dial it in more. You got to dial it in more. You got to dial it in more to where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have literally dialed it in. And someone called the other day, called me the poo-poo guru. I was like, oh <laughs> my gosh, now I'm being called the poo-poo guru. <laughs> Too funny, but it is true. I talk about poop a lot. But that's so important because that is like the number one thing that I see people failing at is that, you know, in the health and wellness space, we're here because we want to help people, right? But unfortunately, like if you want to sell a course or program, you can't help everyone. And you know what? That doesn't even like exclude the people who you're not talking to. They could still buy from you. But if you're going to sell this, you have to like talk to one very specific person. It's the only yeah. way. Otherwise you'll just get, your voice will get lost in the masses. So yeah, I'm proud and that of is, you for that. That is <laughs> definitely what I've learned. So I'm really focusing more. Um, I'm really focusing on one of the symptomologies of, of bloating. And mm -hmm. then of course, of course, seeing, yeah, what's coming out on the other end, because what the body is expelling is telling us a lot. We just don't, I can't tell you how many people are like, I don't know. I don't look at my poop. I'm like, yeah, no, you have to look at your poop because your poop is telling you a lot of information. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. And like also gut health is so foundational. So, you know, if you build courses in the future, this can be like the building, this is like the cornerstone foundation. And then you can, people can build from there, but that's like really where they need to start is with their gut. So, and I know that that's something we bonded over was our digestive health. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm like, oh my gosh, someone else that really understands, you know, and the beautiful thing is you and I, you know, I mean, we came from different backgrounds or different schooling. So we did, we had different approaches to it. And, you know, I, I know there was many times we were like, but why this is how I would do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. That's phenomenal, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. I love I love nothing more than to bounce stuff off of people. And that's one of the things that I have, um, that have kind of come and gone throughout the years of, of practitioners, whether people get too busy or, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people um, want to learn more from me, which is great. But when I have the questions, I'm like, who do I turn to? And I have oh. people. You know, mm -hmm. I have people, but you were one of those um, that were in the office that I was always like, where's Maddie? I need to talk to Maddie yeah. about this one. Come in and tell me what you think. I've got a, you know, a couple of other. No, uh, I'm so glad you brought that, that up. Cause that's like really what I'm trying to do right now with this podcast and with like the Facebook group I'm starting is I feel like we can get easily overwhelmed with how many other health and wellness practitioners there are out there and just see competition when in reality, like we need a little bit more of this like abundance mindset and seeing each other as 
friends and people we can collaborate with and people we can bounce ideas off and really have like a supportive community where we can all build each other up. And yeah, I think that's so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then also just finding those practitioners again, going back to the alignment, which is one of the modules in my course, because I think it's so important because if you align yourself with practitioners that are like-minded or practitioners that you really value and, or people, right. Um, People and spaces, you are going to find that you, your creativity is better. You come up with, you know, strategies more, you've got, you've got so much more to work with than just constantly being in this like narrow-minded solution. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I love that. Okay. So I have one more question for you. And then I was going to see too, which I would have asked you previously, but I already know that you like tarot cards because we used to draw tarot cards. Yes. (laughs) But one thing I kind of wanted to incorporate in this podcast was just a card reading kind of for your business and like, you kind of moving forward in the future. I am um, all so about that. I already pulled you on and it was really great. So I'm excited ah, to share with yay. you. Yay. <laughs> um, okay. But I just want to ask you if you could give one piece of advice to a new practitioner or a struggling practitioner, um, what what would that piece of advice be as far as business is concerned? Um, I'm going to ask a little bit of a deeper question because are you talking about business as how do you start a business or business as in like protocols or both? I mean, it really, however you want to interpret it. So when you think about yourself as a new practitioner, or if there was ever a time that you were struggling to really just make things move, what did you find to be the most helpful, whether it was... Yeah, you I'll know, tell you. marketing or it was the way you approached clients or yeah. Um, I think the first thing was for me, it was about being comfortable with the client that's in front of you. Um, yeah. I I have a gal that's been shadowing me for a while, um, that wants to kind of follow in my footsteps. And she, I think that's the one thing that she's taking away from it. And she's, she's, she's like, for me right now, it's not even about the protocols that you're providing for people. For me, it's about watching you create a friend and person, you know, you, you can relate to every single person that comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much about that. It's just about listening to their story, right? It's about listening to them and having them be heard, like, listen to your people. They Mm -hmm. will tell you everything that's going on. If you just sit back and listen. Yeah. So that's number it. one. Number two is, um, I think if I could do anything, I think the thing that help would have helped me more than anything starting out is working with someone that had a little bit more um, experience than I and having them, it's not about stealing protocols, but mm-hmm. had I had some protocols that could have helped people earlier on, I would have, I would have paid a lot of money for some protocols that I, of course, would have, you know, that's just a, that's just, that's the recipe. You don't have to follow the recipe entirely, right? You can take the recipe, add your own, you add your own flair to it. You add your own um, excitement to it. But I think having, and and that's one of the things I'm actually thinking about next is creating a a protocol book. It doesn't have to mean that it's going to work for everybody, but if you have a guideline of where to look at, whether it's mold or Lyme or digestion or poop, or, you know, moving the lymphatic system or moving the glymphatic system, it doesn't matter. Like here are some protocols to look, to start looking at, and then kind of, you know, if there's a B6 from this company, maybe you use a B6 from a different company. It's okay. But that I think um, is another one of those areas that if I could say, like do your best you can, don't get overwhelmed. But if you can find someone that's willing to share their knowledge with you, take it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love both of those. I think I found a lot of help with both of those from working with you. So that I'm grateful for. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So let's see the card that I pulled here. I'm not like, okay. So I'm going to read it because I'm not the world's best tarot card cooler ever, but I got, let's see, you got, <laughs> you got the world. So. Oh yeah. I'll take that. Okay. So the world is when the world card appears in a tarot reading, you are glowing with a sense of wholeness, achievement, fulfillment, 
fulfill, fulfillment and completion. <laughs> A long-term project, period of study, relationship, or career has come full circle, and you are now reveling in the sense of closure and accomplishment. This card could represent graduation, a marriage, the birth of a child, or achieving a long-held dream or aspiration. You have finally accomplished your goal or purpose. Everything has come together, and you are in the right place, doing the right thing, achieving what you have envisioned. You feel whole and complete. Now, the world card invites you to reflect on your journey, honor your achievements, and tune into your spiritual lessons. Celebrate your successes and bask in the joy of having brought your goals to fruition. And I thought that was really fitting because, you know, wow, we're like, that is really almost, fitting. Yeah, about to launch your course and launch my course. And my about... ring that I'm wearing right now says wholeness. Oh, I love that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> goes together Literally, so well. I have three rings they say different things and today I wore wholeness so how funny that that was part of the card oh I love that I know tarot cards they're just like when you get a good one like that you're just like oh wow everything in this world is meant to be <laughs> It's so true it's so true and um that was like literally like that was the perfect card so thank you so much for reading it because I needed that today I needed that yeah, today. Yeah, you're so welcome. I love that. It kind of gave me goosebumps. <laughs> I know, right? And it's it's interesting because one of the things is I have been, a, I have, honestly, I've been a little ungrounded lately, Um, just trying to put the rest of this, these pieces together. And I still have a little bit of work, but it's, I feel like finally I did, I actually did, worked with a, a gal last night that did some energy clearing on me and I feel more grounded today and more supported today than I have felt in a very long time. And it's, it's like today, today was the first day that that card, if I did not, if I wasn't grounded today, I would have been like, oh my gosh, yes, it's finally coming. Thank goodness. <laughs> but honestly, like I feel more grounded and supported today than I have felt in a very long time. So that is so fitting. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, my mission with this is building a community. So let all the other practitioners out there know where they can find you and um, a little bit about your course too. So if they have, uh, you know, clients who need help with digestion, they can send their clients your way. Sure. So my online course uh, will be launching next month in September. You can go to the revitalized gut.com to get on my early in uh, my early interest wait list. And my course is going to be a nine week comprehensive course that is going to be really about gut health, but looking at it in kind of three different components. And it's going to be about getting back to healthy poop patterns. Imagine that, um, getting back to the energy, that vital energy that we all, um, deserve to have. And then of course, um, balancing out the, this imbalance of weight that comes on that we just, sometimes it gets a little hard to understand why it's happening for us. So um, with that, um, there's going to be, there's again, there's nine different modules that are going to kind of blend into that. So it's about enlightening you with the information, encouraging you or equipping you with the knowledge, and then allowing you to align with that for future. Awesome. Um, you can find me at jenniferhawkshealth.com and then all so social media handles are Jennifer Hawks health. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. This was so fun. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me, Maddie. Of course. Enjoyed this episode. I have something new for you. It is the Entrepreneur Archetype Quiz. I just created this for you to really help you understand who you are as an entrepreneur and how you can take not only your beliefs and your goals around money, but also your goals around really the structure that you want to live your life. So in there, it's going to validate probably a lot of things that you already know about yourself, but sometimes you need that validation. And then on top of that, I'm going to give you your strengths and weaknesses and your desires and help you put that into a framework so you really know how to structure your business. Um, so go ahead, give that a try. I'm going to link it below. Um, and one other thing is that if you are enjoying this community of practitioners, I have a Facebook group for you. It is called The Profitable Practice. And this is where you can really connect with other practitioners. I want to be able to have a, a space for 
unlicensed practitioners and coaches to go to really be able to collaborate with one another and also where we can just show support for one another. I feel that in this world of alternative and holistic health, it can be a little bit scary and maybe even nerve wracking because it can seem like there's a lot of competition. Um, But really, I think that we need to reframe and restructure that because there are so many clients out there in the world that need us and we all really have different things that we can offer. We're all very unique people and we have different areas of expertise. And so by working with one another and collaborating, we can really help each other to achieve so much more. So head over to The Profitable Practice on Facebook and join us inside there.